Hello and welcome to the Chief Architect Kitchen demonstration. My name is Stephanie and I'll be presenting today. Today I'll be designing in Chief Architect Premiere, though all the tools I use today are also available within Chief Architect Interiors. To learn more about either program or to view a detailed comparison chart, please visit our website at chiefarchitect.com. You can also download a free trial while you're there and begin designing in Chief Architect today. For our agenda, I'll start by designing out our space. I'll add in some custom cabinets as well as appliances. I'll create an island, breakfast nook. I'll review our electrical tools, show you how to generate a cabinet schedule. I'll also review rendering techniques and then I'll conclude with a plan set. When I open up Chief Architect Premiere, I have my architectural tools that appear at the top of the screen. These are objects such as doors, walls, windows, etc. You can access any of these tools by clicking on the icons, or all the tools are available within the drop-down menus. We also have display options that appear over on the right side of the screen, and then we have an edit toolbar that's available in the lower left corner. Edit tools are object specific, so as I work through my design today, I'll be referencing this area moving forward. We also have many efficiency tools available within Chief Architect. I'd like to highlight one of those tools now. Currently, we're working in our working plan view, but I'm going to switch this over to my kitchen and bath plan view. When I do this, my kitchen and bath layer set will appear, so this will update the layer set, as well as our dimension defaults will switch over to our NKBA dimension defaults. So this will really optimize our space for our kitchen. Next thing we need to do in order to start designing out our kitchen would be to access our wall tools. So I'm going to select my parent wall tool. This is my straight wall tool. When I click on it, it'll bring up our child options. So we have a variety of walls that we can select between within the program. I'd like to highlight two new tools available within Chief Architect X11. That's our straight glass wall as well as our straight glass pony wall. Since we're going to be designing an interior space, I'm going to select my interior wall. And this is a good time to highlight Within the program, you can work within a specific room or you can work on a full plan. In order to get my kitchen walls into place, I'm just clicking and dragging within the room and I'm using my temporary dimensions as a guide to get these walls close to accurate. I also have a pantry that I'm using within this design, so I'm just going to place those pantry walls now. And then we'll take a camera view to see what we've generated so far. Our camera tool is located up within our architectural toolbar as well, and we have a couple different options to choose from. I have my full camera. Our full camera view, if we took that camera option, would place us within the plan, and this will allow us to see within the room and pan around to get better detail of what's going on within inside the space. We also have our perspective full overview. This would keep a ceiling or roof on our plan. We have our perspective floor overview. This is a dollhouse view that allows us to see with inside with that roof removed. And then we also have our framing overview. So I'll take a dollhouse view now. And you can see just by adding all the walls, we have a 3D model here that has a paint finish. I'm using a mouse with a scroll wheel. So I can hold down my mouse and this will allow me to get a better idea of what's going on on the inside and then I can use my scroll wheel to zoom in. So you can see we have a floor finish, we have molding, and then we also have the paint that is on the inside of the kitchen wall. I'd like to work in multiple views now. So what I'm going to do is pull down my plan view and this will allow us to work with our plan view and then see exactly what's going on in our 3D camera view. We can also go up to our window drop down menu and here's where you can tile horizontally or tile vertically and you can see we also have our shortcut key to click shift F6 on our keyboard and this would give us the same result. So I also wanted to note that oftentimes within Chief Architect there are several different ways to achieve a similar task. So now that we have both of our views in place, I'm going to dimension out our walls. We have two different categories for dimensioning. One is our manual dimensioning tools, and then we also have our automatic dimensioning tools. So I'll select my manual dimension options, and these are dimensions that we can drag out into place, 
and they will locate to different objects depending on what tool we specify. So I'm going to use my interior dimension and I'll just click and drag it out and that'll show you how we can use interior wall dimensions and they'll locate to the wall surface layer. And then I also have the option to select my automatic dimensions or we can even tap on our spacebar, click within our room and I wanted to show you this will bring up that edit toolbar where we can select quickly our auto interior dimension tool. And when I click on that, it'll automatically bring up those dimensions. So the next thing I'm going to do is dimension these walls into place by clicking on the wall and then on the dimension I want to modify. And I'm just going to go all the way around my room, clicking on those walls and getting those set into place. And then we'll also do the same over here for our manual dimension. So I'm clicking on the wall, the perpendicular dimension. And then I'll set this last wall here at 96 inches. And with those adjustments made, I'm going to clean up my view here by clicking on a dimension. I can just delete it and we'll remove it. This would take quite a bit of time. So I want to highlight another efficiency tool. And to do this, I'll select the dimension go down to our marquee select similar tool. This will give us another set of options. Here we can select all similar, we can do a restrictive selection, or we can edit within our main edit mode. I'm going to select my select all similar. This will highlight all of those dimensions and then I'll click delete on my keyboard and now that's cleaned up the space. So from here I'd like to get into my room specification dialog. I can double click within my room to open it up. We also have the option within our edit toolbar to click on the open door and that would open the room as well or control E on your keyboard. So now that I'm in my room specification dialog, we can see that the room is unspecified. I'd like to switch this over to a kitchen. The reason I want to do this is we can define different materials for our kitchen you have control over changing the defaults for different rooms. And then when we get into our electrical tools and we use our outlet tool, it'll note that we need GFCI. Basically those will auto place GFCI outlets within the plan. So we also have control within our structural panel. Here's where we can change the ceiling and floor heights. So currently we have a nine foot ceiling on our plan and I'm going to modify this to a custom ceiling height of 132 inches. So we're really raising that ceiling. We can click tab. We'll see those adjustments being made over in our preview. So let's take a look at what's changed just by making those small edits. I'll click OK on my keyboard. I'm going to get an alert just saying that our room label is currently not displayed. So I'll turn that on so I can show you what this looks like. And you can see those walls have been raised and that floor finish that I've automatically selected for my kitchen has been updated. To give you an idea of what this still looks like, I'll select my 3D view rotate around and we can see our pantry still has that existing material because that room is still unspecified. So there's a couple ways we could switch the flooring over and what I'd like to do to show you this is we'll go up to our material eyedropper and I'm going to select the floor that I want to carry through so that we have one cohesive look. So I'll select the wood and then you'll see in this edit toolbar we have different modes for pasting materials. Right now, component mode is selected. And I'll give you an example of how this works. If we were working with cabinets, for example, and we wanted to update just a door or drawer, we can keep component mode selected and it would only update the item that we're working with. You could also update the entire object. So with the same example with cabinets, if I selected the object, it's going to update the entire cabinet. The same with room. If we had cabinets within the entire room, this is where you'd want to have that selected and also floor. So if we had cabinets in a bathroom or a kitchen, we wanted them all updated. This would be a good mode to use for pasting. And then plan mode would be great if you have multiple floors and needed to adjust good selection of materials. So what I'll use is just select room and then we'll just click within the room and paste it. And now that floor has been updated. 
Next, I'd like to get into my window options and we'll start placing some of our windows. So I'll select my plan view. I'm going to select my window tool and this will bring up several window options. We have our standard window. We also have our bay window, box window, bow window, as well as a pass through and wall niche. I'm going to use just my standard window. It's selected now, so I'll just click within my plan to place that window. I'm also going to click on the window by tapping the space bar, clicking on it one more time, and I'm going to set the dimension here. So this is where I can modify how far I want this window from the wall. We're going to get in here and make some changes. I'm going to click Control E on my keyboard to open up our window specification dialog. Right now we can see we're using our default window. I'm going to switch this over to a double hung window. I'll keep the width here set at 32 inches, though I'm going to increase the height of this window to 72 inches. I'm clicking tab on my keyboard and you can see over in our preview how our window is updating. I'm also going to modify the floor to bottom dimension to raise this window off of the cabinet. I'll set this at 42 inches and then the bottom component size is going to be modified to 50 and you're going to see how this will update over on the right side. My window is starting to change dramatically just with a few changes I've made. You want to add additional options if you have casing, lintel, any modifications to your sill. For example, in this plan I'm going to remove the interior sill as well as the sash frame. I will kind of skim past those two options, but I want to get into my lights panel. Right now I have my lights in top and lights in bottom selected. I'll remove this option and then we'll add one more light across as well as vertically and you can see that update. I'm going to jump down into my materials panel and here's where I can update materials. So I'm going to select my sash and I'll hold control to select my interior sash as well and then I'll select the material. I'm going to change the material so that they're the same color and there's w different ways we could achieve this. So we have a couple different options within our library. The first being our core catalogs. This is core content that comes available when you purchase a license of Chief Architect. You can download them all directly into your program. We also have bonus catalogs. These are additional catalogs that you can use to really enhance the design of your plans and then we have manufacturer catalog. So if you work with any specific manufacturers, for example, cabinetry, we have many different cabinet options available. You can visit our website and download those as well. And then we have the option for a user catalog. And I'll reference this user catalog throughout my presentation as I've housed many components that I'm going to use within the design in this area so that I can quickly access them and not have to navigate through all these folders. We do have an option to search them though and so I'll show that now. I can search all the folders by just typing in a specific word. So I'm going to type in black. This will bring up all the black finishes and I would like to select just a black paint that I'll apply. I'll get the preview over here and I'll select OK and now you can see my window is updated. So I'm going to click OK to accept all the changes that I've made to the window and then since this window has been modified I know I want to add several other windows. We can go down to our edit toolbar and I can go to my multiple copy tool and here is where I can select to evenly distribute copies. Right now I want to add two more copies so I'll keep the number two selected and we'll click OK and then all I have to do is grab that window and pull it directly into place and those windows will be added. I also have additional windows that need to be added to my breakfast nook over here. So I'm going to make a copy of the window and then I'll paste it in place and then I'll want to center this within the room. So I'll click on the window and make sure it gets centered and then I'll copy it again and then we'll paste it over on the other side and just to verify that it's perfectly centered I'm going to grab my center object tool and then I'll place two more copies so I'm going to copy it again paste it within the room and then I'll do a copy and paste in place just to show you another way we can copy and so basically that has pasted the window right on top of that other window and then I can just drag that window out into place I'll hold control and make sure we center it within that breakfast nook. We have all of the windows that we need for our kitchen. I'm going to 
exit out of my dollhouse view and we'll pull up our plan view. I like to keep my plans clean as I move along my design. So I want to show you another trick within the program and that would be to select the item that I'm working with and I can go down to my edit toolbar and open up my object layer properties and here I can see what I'm using and what is being displayed. So right now I'm using a room label within the room and it's also being displayed. I still want this label to be used, but I don't want it displayed in my current view. So I'll click to deselect it and then click OK. And now that's cleaned up the space. We'll get back into our camera tools and I'm going to take a full camera. So I'll just click and drag that camera out into place. I'm going to bring up an image so we can see where we're headed next. Here is a completed render of my design. So I just wanted to point out that we're going to be working on this back wall first and then once we add in those cabinets and appliances I'll work around the room and we'll go over to our pantry and kind of pan around the room. So we'll get back into the program and I'll show you how we can quickly add in some cabinets. We have different cabinet options to choose from within the program. Here is our base cabinet. We also have our wall cabinet. We have a full height, soffit, we have a shelf partition. We also have some custom countertop options as well as backsplash. I'm going to highlight most of these tools within this presentation, but I'll start by just placing our standard base cabinet. This is typically what you would see if you purchased a program. I'm going to open up the cabinet so we can make some changes to our cabinet. Here's where you would make those changes if you're just working to change a specific cabinet but I'm going to cancel out of here and I'll show you how we can change the defaults. So double clicking on the cabinet tool, this will bring up our default settings. I can select my base cabinet and this will change the overall defaults for the base cabinet. Right now I'll set the width, height, and depth the same. I'm not going to make any modifications here, but this is where you can get in and make those changes. We also can change the countertop thickness as well as the overhang where that's going to locate. You also have the control over a backsplash. Right now I have that removed as I'll add a custom backsplash. And then here's where you can control the toe kick. I'm going to jump down into my box construction panel and I can specify if I want to use a framed or frameless cabinet. I'll keep the default set at frameless but I do want to change the overlay to an inset and we can see that update within our preview. I'll get into my front sides and back panel and I want to show you how we have control over the components within the cabinet. So if I select this drawer for example I can simply delete it and now I'm just working with a full door. We also have the option to get into our door and drawer panel and here's where we can specify the type of door we're working with in drawer. So if we get into library, for example, I'm going to type in beaded. I'm going to select a beaded inlay door. We'll click OK, as well as a beaded inlay drawer. And we'll click OK to accept those changes. I also want to drop down into my materials and here is where I can update the type of material I'm working with. I'm going to select all of the cabinet components and I'll select the material here to a shaker gray. Click OK to accept that and then I'm also going to change the countertop to a seashell. I'll select that now, click OK to apply it and select OK and done. And you can see that cabinet has been modified. I can click on the cabinet and I also have control to bring the cabinet further out in place using my 3D view. With this selected, I made it a little larger because we're going to add a sink in. I want to center this cabinet first within the window and that is our starting point. So I'll center the object click on that center window and that will update and then I'll open up our library. So I'll go up to our architectural toolbar, open it up and I'm going to get into my user catalog 
and here is where I'm going to find my sink that I'd like to use. So it's a single basin sink and then I'll just click within that cabinet to apply it. We can also grab another cabinet now and you're going to see that that's going to be those same defaults are updated. I'll add in my dishwasher by going to my user catalog and clicking on that. I'm also going to grab another base cabinet. In 3D I'm going to pull this back into place. This is going to be a 12 inch cabinet. We'll open this up for specification so I'm going to click Control E on the keyboard open up the dialog. Here I want to change the swing side of this door. So I'm going to go down into my front sides and back panel, select the door, and I'll change this to an auto left door and that will now adjust. We'll click OK to accept that change and then I'll grab another base cabinet. I'm going to double click to open up this base cabinet and here I want to change the countertop overhang. Right now it's uniform. I'm going to remove the overhang on the left side as this will back into our refrigerator. We'll be adding a partition. So I'll get that updated and then we'll also go down to our front sides and back. Here I'm going to switch this over to a drawer and then I'll split the drawer horizontally and then I can split it again and this will add several drawers within the plan. If I go up to my vertical layout parent, here I can select it and then I can equalize these drawers so they're all the same distance and I'll do that for this cabinet. I also want to make sure that the cabinet is set at 27 inches so in my 3D view I'll just pull this out into place and I'll make a copy of it and then I'll just place it right next to my sink. I want one more copy so I'll copy it again and then I'll place it right next to that cabinet and I can pull it directly into place. And for this cabinet, it's going to be a 36 inch cabinet, so I'll just pull this out into place. And now that will update. I'd like to take this opportunity to highlight our orthographic tools and how we can use them within our design. So I'm going to go up to my plan view, then I'll select my orthographic view tools. Here I can choose between my cross-section elevation view, my back clipped cross-section view. You can also select a wall elevation, an orthographic full overview, orthographic floor overview, as well as an orthographic framing overview. I'm going to grab my wall elevation tool and then I'll just click within my plan to drag that out into place. And looking at my wall elevation, I can see I need to add in my cabinet filler. So I'm going to go up to my build drop down menu this time and I'll select cabinet filler. You can choose between a base wall or full height filler. I'll click on my base filler and then click within my plan to apply it. This is going to add a three inch base filler by default. You can override this if you need to. Next I'd like to get back into my cabinet tools. We'll grab our partition. I'll click and place this within my plan. Double click to open it up. I'm going to change the specification here the width will be modified to one and a half inches, the height to 84 inches, the depth on this partition will be set at 24 inches, and then we'll click tab so we can preview it and OK to accept the change. And then I'll just pull this directly into place. I've also selected a GE refrigerator that I want to use, so I'm just going to grab that now and place it within my plan. I'm going to select it grabbing that refrigerator and just pulling it into place alongside the partition and then I'll select the partition. I'm going to copy it and reflect it on the other side of the refrigerator to enclose that refrigerator. I'll also grab my wall cabinet and I'm just going to click and place it above the refrigerator. Double click to open it up. Here I'm going to change the width to 45 inches. I'm going to set the height here at 36. I'm not making any changes to that. I'll set the depth to 24 inches. I also need to change that finished floor to top dimension to 120 inches. I'll click tab to update it and then I'll click OK to accept all those changes. With that cabinet still selected, I'm going to center it on top of the refrigerator. Make sure everything lines up and then we'll grab another wall cabinet. Click within the plan to place it. Double click to open it up. 
Here's where I can change the height to 64 inches. I'm going to change the finish floor to top dimension to 120 inches. We'll drop down into the front sides and back panel. I'm going to click on the cabinet and then I'm going to click to split it horizontally. I'm going to change the item height at the top to 21 inches. Click tab to adjust it. I also want to show how we can select a component and modify just a piece of that cabinet. So I want to change the door style. I'll get into my library and then I'm going to type in beaded inlay and grab my beaded inlay door. Click OK. That will update. We'll click OK to accept the change and OK again and we can see that adjust. I need to move that cabinet into place. I also want to grab my material eyedropper to pick up the cabinet color so that it's all cohesive and then I can click my spacebar, select the cabinet, copy it and reflect it on the other set of our windows. So we want to use that sink as our guide and now that will update. I can see I also need to add my filler on the other side of my cabinet. So we'll go up to build down to cabinet filler again and this time I want a wall filler. I'll select right next to that cabinet. We'll open it up to make some changes here. We could see that it's set at three inches. The height on this needs to match the height of the other cabinet so we'll match that there and then we'll drop down to the finished floor to top, keep that at 120 and everything else should be updated now and now that aligns perfectly. There's a couple other things I'd like to do in this view so we'll go back to our cabinet tool again. This time I'm going to select my soffit and then I'll just click within my plan to place the soffit. We're going to open this one up as well to make some changes. I'm going to change the width here to 210 inches, the height to 12, the depth to 24 and then the floor to bottom dimension is going to be 120 and that'll place that right above the cabinet and then I'll get into my materials panel. Right now our soffit is set as drywall but this is going to be a custom beam so I'm going to get into my library. I'll type in a rustic oak see what we can generate and I'll just select this rustic oak material click OK OK again. We can see that our beam is now placed on top of the cabinets. I'm just now dragging that beam in place and we'll take a camera view so we can see exactly what's going on in our 3D view. I'll click on my camera view and then I can see right away that I need to adjust the material of my beam. It's going in the opposite direction so we need to change the wood grain. I'll select my adjust material definition tool. This will bring up our define material dialog. Here we can see the material name, the color of that material, the pattern. You can set the scale. I'm going to drop down to the texture panel and here's where I'm going to change the angle of this material. So I'll set it at 90, click tab on my keyboard and we can see the material update. I'll click OK to accept the change and now it's also been updated in my camera view. Next I'd like to add a custom backsplash so I'm going to go to my custom backsplash tool just click to apply it. If I tap my space bar I can see that we have a subway tile that has been applied. I'd like to update this material to a custom material that I've already imported. This is my kitchen tile. So within Chief Architect you can import your own materials and use them to really enhance your space. We're going to go back up to our orbit tool. We'll rotate around our plan. I'm going to add a ship lap to the additional walls within my plan so I just need to grab that out of the library, click to paste it within the room and that will update. I'd also like to add in a door so we're going to go up to our door tools. We have a couple new doors that have been added with Chief Architect X11. Our first being our fixed door. We also have a barn door as well as a shower door. So I'm going to select this barn door and then I'll click within my plan to apply it. I want to update the material so it matches our cabinets. So I'll go up to my material eyedropper tool. I'm going to select the cabinet color that I'd like to pick up. We're going to switch this over to object mode and then we'll paste it. We also can select the door itself and we do have additional options down in that edit toolbar. So I want to show you we can show our door open. So I'm going to show it open in 3D and now we can see directly into our pantry. 
I'd like to add in my transparency clock too, just to start to customize this space and add some more character. Now with this added, I'm going to exit out of my library. So I'm going to take another camera view. So we'll close out of this space. My elevation, before we close out of this view, I'd like to do one more thing as well, and that's going to be to dimension this wall elevation. Within our automatic dimensioning tools, I can select my NKBA dimensions, and this will quickly grab the dimensions within the cabinet. I did this because when we go back to our plan view, I'm actually going to save this view by clicking on the elevation and then going down to my save camera so that I can save the view, but then I can close out of the tab to clean up our space. So let's take that camera view that I mentioned. We'll click and drag it out, and we're going to spend some time designing our island. So I'm going to work in two views again, our plan view as well as our camera. I'll zoom in here, and I'm going to grab my base cabinet again. I'll click to place a base cabinet, double click to open it up for specification, here I'm going to change the width of the cabinet to 27 inches. I'll click tab and that will update. And then I also want to close the toe on this particular cabinet. So we'll close the toe and click OK. I'm going to grab another base cabinet and set it right up to our existing cabinet. And this time I'm just going to pull this one out into place. So this is going to become a 36 inch cabinet. And then I'll grab my 27 inch cabinet, make a copy of it, reflect it on the other side, and we're making the back side of our island. Here is where we're going to add in a range. So I'll go up to my library, open it up, and grab that component that I'd like to use, and just apply it directly on that island. I also want to update the color of my island so far, so I'm going to type in a specific paint color again. And I'll select it from my options here. I'm going to go and click to apply it to each of these objects. Now that has been updated. Well, I'm now going to multi-select these cabinets, so I need to tap on my spacebar in this view, grab all these objects, and now I can rotate them around in place. And then I can go and grab my partition to really enhance and change the back side of this island. So I'm going to double click to open up my partition. I'm going to set this at 1 inch. The height is going to be set at 34.5 inches and the depth of it will be 90. And I'm going to click OK to accept the change. And you can see all these changes take effect over here in my camera view as I'm working over in my plan view. We also have an option in our edit toolbar that will allow us to do a point to point move. So I'm going to click this option, we'll zoom in, and I'm going to click on the point that I'd like to select and then the point I want to move it to. And that will automatically get that directly into place. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a custom countertop. I'll click on the island and then I'm going to click on my custom countertop tool and pull this out directly into place. And then we also need it to hang over so that we have room for our bar stools. So I'm going to clear my last selection. We have some more features that we need to add. So the next thing we'll do is get in and add our ship lap. And I'm just going to paste it. And then I'll add my base square leg by clicking in my plan view, selecting that base leg, copying it, reflecting it on the other side of the island. I can also get in and grab my bar stools, place those by selecting them, holding down control on my keyboard. This will allow me to freely move them within the plan. I do want to also accessorize, so I'll get my arrangement click within my plan to place it. It's going to alert me that it's going to block a cabinet. I'm going to override that notification. I'm just going to grab the arrangement and pull it in to place and that will no longer be an issue. Now that we've spent time really customizing this island, I'd like to save this as a grouped 
item together. So we can create an architectural block and this will allow us to use it again in the future for future plans. So what I'll do is use my Select Object tool. I'm just marking around all the items that I want to grab. Down in the Edit Toolbar, I can make the architectural block. Then I can add it directly to my library. I have the ability to rename it, so I'll set it in place as Island. Then I'll move it up into my user folder and that will allow me to use it again. So with this block in place, I can also dimension it directly where it needs to be located within the kitchen. So I'm going to go up to my manual dimensioning tools. This time I'm going to select my point to point dimension and I'll just click and it's actually exactly where I wanted it to be. I'd like it 48 inches from my sink. So I'll keep that dimension there. We're going to use another architectural block that I've already generated to show now how we can bring it into a plan. If I click on my camera view, use my mouse orbit tool, I can rotate to this backspace. And here's where I'd like to add my architectural block. So I'm going to click on my plan view, select the architectural block, click to apply it within the plan. And I can see here I'm going to need to change the direction it's facing and then pull this back into place. Next, I want to break my architectural block. I'm going to do this because we'll come back and add in some lights within our cabinet. So this will allow us to get in and make any individual changes or customization to these cabinets now that we brought them into our plan. While I'm in this view, I'm also going to dimension our island. It's very close to our oven. So I'll go in and get my point to point dimension and this just drag it right across. And I'm going to click on the island, so tapping the space bar, click on the dimension you want to modify and I'll change this to 48 inches and then we can remove these dimensions. Another way we can select items and remove them would be to click on that parent tool, hold down shift on the keyboard, marquee around the objects you want to delete and click delete and now that will clean up that space. So we're going to finish up the design portion of our webinar today by moving on to our breakfast nook. Here is another render of that space. So you can see we use cabinets that can be very versatile within the program. So I'm going to show you how we can really modify to create that bench seating that we have in our breakfast nook. So getting back into the program, I'll exit out of our full camera and we'll take another camera view. And then I'll just click and drag it within my plan. And we can also scroll back out using that scroll wheel. This will give us a good view of our space. And then I'll pull down our plan view. So I'm going to grab a cabinet. We'll get our base cabinet. And then I'll just paste it within my room. I'll double click to open it up. Here I'll change the width to 65 inches. The height is going to be adjusted to 18 and the depth to 18 as well. I'm also going to jump down into the toe kick section and remove it from this cabinet. So I'll set it at zero. And then we also have an options area down here and you can see that currently this cabinet is being used within our cabinet schedule. I'm going to click to deselect it so that it doesn't populate when I generate a cabinet schedule and then we'll get into our front, sides, and back. I'll select the component I want to modify. I'm going to open this up in my drop down menu and change this to a blank area. I'm also going to jump down into my materials. I'm going to update the countertop. So right now we're using that existing seashell. I'm going to select the material. I'm going to change this to an aged leather. So I'll just type in leather. And there's that leather brown that I'd like to use. I'll click OK to apply it and OK to accept those changes. And you can see now that our bench has been modified. So I'm just going to pull this back into place. With it selected, I'm going to copy and reflect it within the room. And then I'll also make another copy. I'll paste it out here so that I can swing it around into place. I'll move it back and then I'll have to align it so that it fits all the way back 
within our room. I want to move on to accessorizing this space, so I'm going to get into my user catalog, into my kitchen folder, and here I have a kitchen table selected. I'm going to just paste it within my room, and you can see that's currently blocked together, and now I have that added. And then right when I did that, my lighting has also updated since I'm using a light within this architectural block. I want to show you that there are so many ways that we can use blocks within the program. I've even blocked together pillows that I want to apply, so I'm going to grab those now. I'll click to place it. It's going to tell me that it's conflicting, and that's okay. I'm going to select OK, just because I already know I need to move these into place. So I'm going to swing them around. I'll hold down control on my keyboard and just slide those directly into my room and apply those on top of my bench. And now our breakfast nook is complete. From here I'd like to complete our electrical plan. So I'm going to close out of my full camera view. I'll zoom back out. I'll go back up to our plan view and we're going to switch over to our electrical plan view. Then I'll select my electrical tools and we have a couple different options to choose from. We can place our outlets. We also can place lights. We have the ability now with X11 to place rope lighting, and I'll show you that in a moment. And then we can place switches, auto place switches, and connect our electrical. The first light I'm gonna place is our rope lighting. I'm just going to apply this right beneath our cabinet and then I can move it directly into place. We can open up our rope lighting for specification. Here we can reference where we're going to have these lights appear. I'm going to have them set at 54 inches so it goes right below the cabinet. And then our distance between lights is set at 3 inches. You can modify this dimension if you'd like so you have a lot of control within our dialogues to really enhance your plan. I'm going to click OK to accept that change and now we can see our rope lighting has been added. We can also go and grab a standard recessed light and click within our plan to apply these lights. I'll click within my beam. This is going to drop my light below my soffit and I'm going to make some copies of it. So I'm going to select the light and go down to our multiple copy tool. I'll make two more copies of it. I'm going to click down on the left side of my mouse, drag these lights out into place. Then I'll go to my electrical tools, grab another recessed light, and I want to show you this time how we can use the similar tool to create a secondary row. So I'll go back to our multiple copy tool, and here I have the option to keep the primary number set of copies. I'm going to keep that at two, but we also have a secondary copy option. So I'm going to keep this number set at two more intervals as well. We'll click OK. This time, instead of clicking down on the left side of my mouse, I'm going to hold down the right side of my mouse and then pull it out into place. And as soon as those lights are located, where I want them to be, I'll click down on my mouse to apply them. We can also get into our library. I have a pendant that I'd like to apply. So I'm just going to click to place this over my island and now that has been updated. So moving on with our electrical tools, I also want to place a switch within my plan. So I'll grab that switch and place it. I'll show you how we can connect electrical within our software. We have our connect electrical tool. I'll just grab my pendant lights just to demonstrate how this can be done. I'll just click and apply it to my switch. And now those connections are together. You can also change your connection line by pulling it directly into place if you want your connections to locate differently. We can also auto place outlets within the program. So I'm clicking within my room and now those outlets have been added. You can also see where cabinets are located. Those are GFCI outlets. You can see this one has been placed behind the refrigerator. So we most likely want to bring that directly into place. So you do have control to still move and edit outlets even when they're applied within your plan. 
So let's take a camera view and see exactly what our plan looks like with all the additional lighting techniques that have been added. When I get into my camera view, I can see my outlet needs to be moved right below my cabinet, so I'll make that adjustment now. And now our lighting plan is complete. I want to show you another tool within the program, and that is the ability to create a cabinet schedule. So to do this, we're going to go up to CAD, and I'm going to scroll down to CAD Detail Management. Here I'm going to create a new CAD detail, and I'm going to create my cabinet schedule. So I'll type in cabinet schedule, and we'll click OK. Then I'll go up to my toolbar again, and I'm going to go to Tools this time, down to Schedules, and select Cabinet Schedule. Here I can apply a cabinet schedule based on what has been generated within the program. I'm going to double click to open it up and make changes. I do want to add a 3D perspective view to my schedule. Over here on the left side we have our available columns. I can select that perspective, add it to the columns to include, and then I can move it up and place it exactly where I want it to go within the schedule. So I want it to follow right after the number. So I'm going to have that adjusted there. And then I also want to remove a few items that I know I don't need. The code, I'm going to delete this from my schedule, so I'll just click remove. I also want to remove the manufacturer for this particular cabinet schedule as well as comments. And I'll click remove as well and we'll click OK. And now you can see our cabinet schedule has been modified. So you have a lot of control within the software to make sure that your cabinet schedule is accurately displaying the information that you want it to. So I'm going to jump back into my electrical plan view. We'll switch this over to our kitchen and bath plan view. And you can see now that all of those callouts have been updated to match our cabinet schedule. And this will be helpful when we get in and create our construction drawings. So there's only a couple more things I'd like to show before we wrap up today. Our first being our rendering techniques. So I'll exit out of my library browser, select my rendering techniques icon. Here I can choose between my standard render, that's what we've been working with throughout today's presentation. We also have a vector view you can choose between a glass house. This is a great option for kitchen and baths. It allows you to really see within the cabinets. We also have a dual tone. This is going to take out a lot of the color within the design. You can work with our technical illustration as well as a painting. We also have the option to select a watercolor. I like to do a watercolor with a line drawing on top. I can show you how we can do that by dropping down to our technique options. Here we have more control over the type of view we're working with. So with watercolor selected, I can click to use a line drawing on top, click to select OK, and we can see this view update. We also have the option to do just a line drawing as a standalone line drawing and then we have our physically based render. And this is a quick way to get a render within the program. All of those images that we were working with earlier were based off this physically based render. And what I did was just get in and changed my sun, lighting, and materials will get you a nice render. Here's a view again of what that looks like. And then another view of our breakfast nook. We still have the ability within the program to ray trace. You can always go up to our architectural toolbar to create a ray trace. Here I like to use my assistant. This will walk you through the process of getting your ray trace set. You have control over the width and height of the render you want to create. And then you can go all the way through the dialogues to really produce a great render. I'll exit out of here now. There's one more thing I'd like to highlight, and that's the option of creating a layout sheet within the program. To do this, we can go to File, and you can select a new layout, or you can open a layout. I'm going to open a layout. Here is a template that we've used before. 
On this layout, you're automatically going to be dropped down into page one. However, you have a lot of control if you go into page zero. Here's where you can modify. We can get in here and change the text that's going to display on all the pages. Right now we have our logo that we've used. And then within our plans, we can actually go and send different views to our layout. I'm going to go back into my plan view. Here I'll double click on that wall elevation I took. I can send it directly to my layout sheet by clicking right up on my architectural toolbar, send to layout. Here I can specify where I want this elevation view to be sent. For example, I'll just send it to page one and then we can also set the scaling. I'll click OK to accept the changes and we can see the elevation now has been sent to our layout sheet. You can also send camera views to our layout. So if we wanted to get into our camera view, we can send over just a standard render, file, send a layout is another way of doing this. I can also send this to page one and we can click OK. I'll click on my render, pull it into place, and then I'll take a moment to show you my completed plan set for Lookout Drive. Here we have a render, our logo. If we scroll down to page two, you can see we have our plan view. Our floor plan is dimensioned out as well as cabinet schedule. You can also see that I have added my elevation to this plan set as well. So that's gonna conclude our presentation. I wanted to mention again that I designed in Chief Architect Premier. That's the top program in our product line. Chief Architect Premier is designed for full residential as well as light commercial. It includes all interior, exterior, and structural tools. We also have Chief Architect Interiors available, and that's a good program if you're a kitchen or bath designer. With either program, they can be purchased or we even have a rental option. And support and software assurance will come available with a purchase or even a rental. With support and software assurance, some of the highlights of the features that have come available with this service are our technical support. You can also download our manufacturer content as well as access our new versions and releases. And then we also provide discounts on additional licenses.